the... Oh, somebody's still coming. Anyway, no power cooking, and we got several items that are going to be displayed to us tonight. If we had a little sun, we could make them work. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you don't want a solar oven as your first choice. Exactly. But I will emphasize why you don't. Exactly. <laughs> are the moon ovens available yet? <laughs> I haven't seen them out. So, anyway... Uh, so we're duplicating each other, because I misunderstood that you were teaching rocket stove. Um, I'm teaching so. a, a homemade rocket stove. Okay. Yeah, he is. Um, and a couple of other things. So why don't we let Kevin start okay. with his uh, thing. And then we'll... yeah. So, welcome. My name is uh, Kevin Reeve. I am a survival instructor and a self-reliance instructor. I teach it for a living. And so um, we started these classes about four or five years ago. I taught all of them. Uh, and finally I burned out. And we started getting other people to come and teach. And then we stopped for a while. And then we started again. And now I teach a couple every six months or so. And so Anyway, that's my background. I've been, I've, been, I've been teaching survival for 25 years. I taught at the largest survival school in the world. I also started my own school uh, that focuses on urban survival. So, here we are. Um, the scenario that, that I'm envisioning that this will be useful for is a situation where we lose fossil fuel and electricity. In other words, your gas pipes lose pressure, you've used up all your propane, and the power company grid is down. So you've got nothing um, that you can rely on from... you got nothing that you can rely on from... Um, The, the utility companies or whatever. I mean, we're in a, we're in a serious trouble energy-wise because we're taking out all the coal plants and, and we're adding electric cars and the grid's just not going to take it. So um, I've come up with a number of techniques to be able to prepare food and to purify water that um, doesn't require any kind of fossil fuel. The only, the only one that requires any kind of fuel is the, is the, uh, is the, the wood. Uh, rocket stove. Yeah, rocket stove. I made one. I'll show you how I made it. Um, it would be nice to show you how it works, but that isn't going to happen. So, let's start off with solar. We live in a great place for solar, except today. <laughs> All kinds of solar options. This is a solar cooker. It is commercial. It has a stand underneath it, and you can tilt it either direction and, and track the sun with it, if you need to do. Uh, but it is an amazing heat source. Absolutely free energy, right? And then you don't pay anything for it. And uh, without a whole lot of effort, you can keep water boiling indefinitely. So I have a, um, I have a solar, I mean, I have a still that would go on the pot place, and uh, there's a pot holder on top. And I would just distill water all day because water will be a challenge. And I can take the foulest water you can ever imagine, I can take urine. And I can distill it into absolutely pure H2O. Did you say you had a distiller? That's what this, this uh, pressure cooker is. So here's the pressure cooker, an oh. old antique. <coughs> and I have the wrong one. This is the one that actually does canning. But what I have is a second one, and it has a connection here, hose, 
and a copper tube that I coil off the side. When I seal it, fill it with water and seal it and cook it, it'll boil that water into vapor and come back into uh, moisture without any chemicals or pollutants. When I do this, at the end of the at the end of the time, when I uh, when I open it up and look, the inside is filled with all kinds of hard water deposits. And where does the good water go to? It goes into a container at the end of the tube. Okay, so the bad water's in there, and the good water. Yeah, and it leaves all the all the bad stuff behind. How much does one of these gadgets cost? I don't remember. I bought it. Ten years ago, maybe. So it's double. Is the tube metal, <laughs> or is the? But I'm going to show you how to make one. All right, it's, it's really easy to make. Um, but they are they are phenomenal, and there was a, there used to be a place, it's kind of next to, uh, it's in in the mall with uh, the Walmart, and it was a preparedness store, and he had these for sale, and I saw it right away. Had to have. I didn't bring another distilling method, and I should have, and I forgot. And that is, a, it's a clear plastic dome with a thing on the inside, and you put it over whatever you want to distill in the sun, and it creates a greenhouse effect. The water goes up, down into the trough, and, and you can purify free energy. It's free energy. Now, this is free energy. You, know, you, don't have to, you don't have to worry about paying the electric bill on this. Right? It's just super easy. And so solar is, is my go-to method um, for keeping, keeping myself in the water. So this is also a canner for doing pots and cans, and there's some way to close that. I can't remember. Hey, Tim, I got one for 84 bucks. So one of these? On Amazon. Oh, there you go. That's probably less than I paid. What are they called, those big ones? Parabolic. Parabolic solar reflector cooker. Now, this one's $10. <clears throat> this is a window reflector. Right? And I just cut slits in the bottom and stapled it in. I just stapled it overlapping and made a... A pretty good reflector. Uh, I would put. I need to stay. I need some stable stable stabilizer. So I put a couple of sticks in the ground to hold it in place. <coughs> Just put a a stainless steel pot without plastic appliances on it. And I, I, this one just doesn't seem to be affected. But, you know, plastic handles would melt if it got too hot. And you can just boil or cook. Um, and and that, is, that is a super easy and super cheap. That's like a $10 reflector from the auto parts store. I mean, it's what you're trying to do is take advantage of all the opportunities you can. Now, I was, uh, I was explaining that this... That there's that pot holder. If you put uh, a pot on there, you have to you have to adjust the sun so that you don't overcook everything or burn the pot bottom. Because at that focal point where that thing sits, the temperature reaches 750 degrees. That's pretty hot. So you have to cook it just 10 minutes. Or yeah, really and, and, and maybe just turn it a little bit off direct angle so the focal point's a little Not different. So or raise or lower. It's it's adjustable, so you can raise or lower it so that you can get the. Uh, you don't you don't want to melt the bottom of an aluminum pot. That that would really not be good. Yeah. Darren, how, what, how far away can you get? It won't burn you. I mean, what about a kid walking in front of that? Yeah, it's it's okay as long as you don't put your hand in that ring. I took. I, I was curious to see how hot it was, so I took a two by four, and I put it in the ring. And it instantaneously burst into flames. It just, oh. I went, yeah, that's probably not going to be my hand. How, how do you get your pots and things off then? Um, well, the, the bales. Yeah, you can just turn it. 
Yeah. Turn it and let it cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and um, but this would be good for a a pure stainless steel pot. It's also really good for a Dutch oven. Put a Dutch oven on there, cover it up. You pretty much can't hurt a Dutch oven. I mean, I don't know what you could do to melt it, but I don't think this is capable of it. So a Dutch oven would be a really good cooking source for it. Um, you have that hoop. You could also um, create a hanger and, and, and hang the pot on a chain so that it, you can adjust it. But uh, the idea here is to take advantage of the sun. This has been sitting in my shed for probably a year, year and a half. So it's dirty. But when that thing is clean and polished, man, does it, does it go to town. And it's got a lot of adjustments. It's got a tracking mechanism. It's got an up and down mechanism. And so easiest thing to do is get the sun in the focal point and then just turn it. Just twist the whole thing. Question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can it gather some on a cloudy day? It probably can. You know, I, I mean, we could we we could certainly find out. I don't have a thermometer with me, but it would be easy to easy to tell. Usually, you, you have to be able to cast a shadow. If there's a shadow, then solar cooking will work. If there's not, like it's overcast like this, it won't. So, an alternative to this. Is to make your own. This is foam core, glue stick with uh, put glue stick and aluminum foil, and I just make a circle, go around until I have what I want, and then I can slide a a, a pot holder. I can hang something on it. I'll have to get a rack to make it stay still and not blow away because it's obviously very light, but it's, uh, it's, it's an alternative to this. If you don't have that, and you got cardboard and aluminum foil and glue, you can, you can make your own, and it's not, it works pretty darn good. I was very impressed at how my, the first one I made actually cooked well. And so this is foam core, and I just connect, I cover it with, um, glue stick, put the foil on it, and then put a uh, blue tape to hold them together. Yep. And it works pretty good. I mean, it's it surprises me how well that will work. Without trying to go off topic. Yeah. Um, this is a solar gathering cooking method. Mm -hmm. Can you use um, solar panels? Yes, so you if get your electricity, so you can do that in the house. Yeah, you could do solar ele electricity, store it in a battery, and then run a um, an electric burner or something on it. You need an inverter, though, right? Yeah, yeah. you have, yeah. To, have to have an AC inverter. Yeah. Well, you can well, buy some. It doesn't go very far. Like the Blue Eddy, or I'm trying to think. There's another brand that's not as well known that's a third less price and outscores the Blue Eddy on everything. And it's not coming to my mind, but that has solar panels and an inverter and a battery, I mean, storage. Yeah. I mean, I have that too, but that's more to run the freezer and the refrigerator than cook with. Because right. cooking, that kind of cooking is very BTU intensive. I mean, it takes a lot of energy out of the battery. So I, I want to avoid using that for batteries as much, I mean, for cooking as much as I can. Use it to keep things cold. So, um... Uh, this homemade stuff is really, it's really simple, it's really easy, and um, really fun. This is a homemade version of that rocket stove. It's a little different than hers, but it's got a four inch stove pipe, hole cut in the side. Yeah? Can you hold it up so we can see? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. So it's got a, a four inch hole cut. Um, and this is cat litter that I stack around it. And I'll let you come up and look at it. Um, you put a lot of paper in there and then shove some sticks in the end and it'll, it'll burn really good. I have 
stakes that go over the top of it, or a grill that goes over the top of it to hold the pot off. You need a little standoff space from the top of the pan, at the top of the pipe. But that's an elbow on, it's either four or five inch um, stovepipe. Buckets, 12 bucks, stovepipes, probably 12 bucks, cat litters, three bucks. You're, you're good to go. That you can do it with a number 10 can, too. Uh, you can do it with 10 cans. I found that to be harder. I, I've made a couple that way. But this galvanized bucket will last forever. And um, I carry with me, when I use it, a tile. Because sometimes the heat transfers through the bottom. And the tile will keep you from burning a hole in your kitchen counter. Now, you can't use it in Georgia, but it, the, 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 that keeps it off off whatever flammable what so, I, items there are. So rocket stoves, really cheap, really easy, really efficient, because you can burn whatever you can find is flammable. Uh, sticks and twigs, you can walk around this yard, this, this park, and probably find enough stuff fuel just laying on the ground. I'm actually looking and seeing if somebody wants to just pick it up. <laughs> but, you know, twigs, pine cones, pine cones burn great. I use pine cones a lot. Would that thing burn any hotter if it was a taller chimney? It, well, the chimney is providing the heat under the bottom of the pan. If you want to see one that's really slick, does everybody know who Matt Clark is? Matt made a uh, a bunch of these that are unbelievable out of steel. For a five inch box steel, oh man, they're, they're awesome. Who's you, who, there you have one. Got one. Talk, tell us about it. Uh, the way he got it set up, and each one of them are a little bit different because he improved each time he did one. Uh, it's like uh, about four, four and a half inch pipe going straight up. On the side, you put the twigs in it can boil water. Most of the stoves, I've, I've, the rocket stoves I've seen don't boil water. His does boil water. And uh, it can cook whatever you want on that top. So you're putting sticks down in the bottom. It has an area where ashes fall out the side. Yeah, it has, a, has yeah. another area where he's got air coming in that feeds it. And so then this, if you want toast, same, you just slam, the same thing. slap your bread on the side of it and it'll cook. You so cook the toast feed your in sticks matter, in uh, here. And there's supposed to be square a square pipe or round pipe? Square. And it's not pipe, it's uh it's welded uh steel. Okay. Yeah. I mean it's it's like I don't know what exactly it was. But this one has got a there's it's missing, but there's a plate that goes in here, it's a piece of galvanized steel that separates the air and the and the fuel. So you put the fuel on top yeah. and the air goes in underneath and uh, creates quite a rocket. But just just a few sticks. We'll cook them in. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, it take and throw in a couple of pine cones and, you know, pine whatever, cones are much better. whatever you find in your yard <clears throat> after, a, uh, after a windstorm, that's your fuel. You don't, you don't want anything bigger than your thumb. Right? It's just twigs and sticks. Mm -hmm. And that thing will, that thing will, that will, it will cook. I call them fast and furious because it heats up really fast and they're very intently hot. But you do have to keep feeding it, and that's the drawback to me. Yeah, and and <coughs> fill them up with cement, fill the bucket up with cement, whether it's five gallon Home Depot bucket, put a tin can inside of it, fill it up with cement. Fill that the, would work fill as well. The tunnel, then you actually have a radius. Then you're going to hold the heat. Yeah, that's true. Also, that's you can pick true. it up and you know put some handles onto it so that the plastic. It, the heat's not going to get to the plastic. They have, they have. You can pack it into your tent, put it in your tent after it's off. They have, they have uh, galvanized buckets that are five gallon steel, galvanized steel that would work well too. That would be a good idea. You know, there's that um, in the bottom of your wood stove that it's it's a cement, but it's that's not what it's yes, called. It's called um, brick. Uh, brick. Right, but they have a liquid one you can mix up. And you, oh, that would be interesting. and you could, I bet that would work really good because it would insulate. Yeah. I forgot the name of it. My mm -hmm. fire, our fire broke and we had to chip it out and put it all new in. 
That's pretty interesting. So, All right, so question: would, yeah. Can you buy these commercially? Or do you have to? Yes, the, here's a commercial one, and she'll talk about. That's it. it's not a rocket stove. It's a volcano, oh, completely volcano. different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you can buy them. So uh, I'm minute? willing to bet you'll you'll find it at Family Still Matters. Okay. But Clark, um, Matt Clark has has the design. There's a ton of them online too. Yeah. You can find them ranging from $50 to $500, depending on size and how well they're made. I think Minuteman makes the best. That's my own opinion. Yep. So, one of the one of the great energy savers is called a Wonder Box, which is a tote like this with pillows. They're filled with. Um, bean bag. Hmm? Bean bag? Um, yeah, bean bag uh, stuffing. Beads. And you, you put this on your whatever and you get it boiling. You now you take it off that, put it on here, stick it. I use the foil to keep it from burning out. And then cover it up. That thing will keep the pot boiling for half an hour, 45 minutes without adding any more heat. So a big pot of potatoes, a big pot of a roast or something like that. Oh, that's a really good way to conserve energy. You could it? do a Dutch oven instead of a You could do a, put a Dutch oven in there. Okay. Yeah, you just don't want it so hot that it melts the fabric or burns the fabric. And I have not had that happen. No, I haven't either. So I more insulation. Use it yeah. daily and it has never, after it's been boiling on the stove for 15 minutes, it's still never hot enough to do damage. So. Yeah, and so you can get those, um, they're drink tubs. They're blue and they're about, they're round. Those make really good laundry boxes. They don't have a lid, but if you make a lid like this, it'll still work. Why did you call it a drink? Hmm? Why did you say a drink? It's a it's a tote. It's a blue handled a blue tote with handles on it, and they put drinks in it at a picnic. Okay, nice. You can find so that. an ice chest. You can make your own with an ice chest with a cardboard box. Online, you'll find some that are even metal uh, metal cylinders. That work the same way with thermal cooking. Yeah, actually, a friend of mine was going to bring one of those down, and she didn't show up. So. Um, so the, the the sun oven, I have made my own sun oven, and I have a commercial one. And um, commercial one works better, but it's possible to do it. And I'll, uh, if you don't cover that, I will. The commercial. Homemade. Oh, not I'm not covering homemade sun ovens. Okay. I'm just talking about well, not covering homemade solar cookers. I'm covering the sun oven brand. Right. All right, um, any questions about any of this? Yeah. Uh, on the water, when we were talking about purifying it, do you know if it'll take out radiation? I would bet it will. It's a heavy metal. It takes out all heavy metals, so lead, iron, um, any, any heavy metal stays behind. Because <coughs> the Berkeys don't take out heavy metals, right? Filters don't. Yeah, okay. the Berkey does. Does take out heavy metals. <clears throat> That's a big enough yeah. particle that it can. There are some things it cannot. Pharmaceuticals and those kinds of things. Oh, the Berkey nitrates. does not. nitrates. It's mm -hmm. said like the yeah. nitrates it won't. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know. I think it does Clorox or chlorine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The nitrates are fertilizer, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure water itself cannot be irradiated. Right. It would be the particles so in the water. So if you, so filter, if you can properly. filter out mm -hmm. the water or distill it, then it would be safe. Yeah. That is what I understand. But, uh, you know, I mean, these are some alternatives. They're not all that expensive. A lot of it do it yourself. Um, I brought a Dutch oven. Behind you. Behind you. He's right behind uh, you. <laughs> So Dutch ovens are great uh, because you can cook with just a, you don't need any kind of fossil fuel to cook them, just, pop, just wood.
charcoal, whatever. And uh, they, they are very effective, but they also work really good on so with solar. Like on your wood stove, like you and I have a wood mm -hmm. stove. How would you cook on a wood stove? Where would you put it, or how? Well, would I have you... a flat top on my wood stove. Uh, okay, and I do too. And so you just put it right set on it top. Right on there. Okay. Yeah, the, the problem is. Um, the problem with my stove is that it's got a double layer and the fan takes the hot air between the layers and blows them out the front so the top never gets very hot. Oh, okay. So I probably would, I'd probably not do a lot of that. Okay. So, but um, if we have a single wall stove, then it would work great. All right, no questions, I'll turn it over. Hey, let's circle around this way. He's gonna come. I think he'll visit. I had to bring my dog. We have his new dog. Our cats are not happy, and they needed some time without him at the house so they would come out of hiding. <laughs> okay. Um, I am Barbara Johnston. My background is my husband had an emergency preparedness business for years, an online business, and my state calling in our last state was emergency preparedness education which I did for 14 years. So that's where I get my experience. Kevin and I are overlapping a lot, so let me just talk a little bit about some of the things he talked about. The Wonder Bag or Box is a thermal cooker. Think of it like a crock pot or a slow cooker, but it only retains the heat you put inside it. It's not gonna get any hotter. So your food has to be hot when you put it in and then it keeps it from cooling. It takes a long time for it to cool down. Some tricks to keep it from cooling is size your pot properly. You want your pot full of food. So if your food was only halfway in this pot, use a smaller pot. Air gaps are your enemy and it's gonna cause your um, Wonder Box to cool faster. If you're using a smaller pot, then you might need to pack some towels in around here. So again, no air gaps. You just don't want air gaps to um, make your Wonder Box and your food cool too quickly. I'm going to give you an example. So last year when I did this class, I made some bean soup with dry beans that had not been soaked beforehand. I did it the night before. We had the class at 10 a.m. And it was still so hot, I had to use hot pads to take it out. So it was really good at retaining heat. Did it soften the beans? Yeah, they were completely cooked. Who was here last year? <laughs> but yeah. you didn't taste the soup. I did. Yeah, and the soup was hot. Yeah, it was hot. So you heated it up to what it needed to be heated? Yes, so your food needs to be hot through. I just got a text last month from somebody who came to that class and she had read something online. Thank you, who's going to go get the dog. That um, you had to heat dry beans for more than five minutes to make them be safe. So I wasn't, I guess, clear enough. Your food has to be hot. Dry beans, I would heat and have it a simmer at least 15 to 20 minutes. So they're hot through. So it has to be hot when you put it in. Um, I do find it works better with a pan with short handles, not a long handle, because you can get a better fit. The other thing that's great about a Wonder Box, it can work as um, like an ice chest. You could put something frozen in it and it would stay frozen. The lady who I know who is the Wonder Box guru, and I mean guru, she bakes in her Wonder Box um, by putting boiling water in with whatever she wants to bake. So she, it's fascinating what she does. Uh, one summer, 110 degrees, she bought ice cream at the store, put it in here, drove around for three hours, got home, it was still frozen solid. Mm -hmm. So they really are excellent at retaining either heat or cold. Um, what you can make it a purchase thing or you made it? I made it. I can tell Kevin made his or somebody did. We'll have the pattern online, but you can also purchase already made Wonder Bags. And usually they're more bag-like, heavily insulated, and they have a drawstring at the top. Um, there are a couple of other styles, but you don't have to purchase anything. Use an ice chest with towels and blankets. As long as you've got enough insulation around and no air gaps, it's gonna work. So not only around, but under and on, on top. You wanna keep that heat in for as long as you can. 
Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to say about. So you have to have power to get it hot before you put So it this in. is where <laughs> your rocket stove comes in great. Okay. Fast and furious, it'll get it hot fast, and then you can put it in here. The other thing, and when we get to the volcano stove, I'll talk about it. Using your volcano stove to heat something, put it in okay. for a meal the next day, and then make tonight's meal on the volcano stove so you're getting two meals out of your fuel. Oh. So I'm very fuel conscientious. Okay. Let's see if I left anything out about what I wanted to say. Oh, don't be lifting the lid and checking it all the time, <laughs> okay? You're gonna lose your heat. So you don't wanna do that. Open it when you're ready to serve. It's not gonna burn anything. Like your crock pot, um, the liquid doesn't, um, I've got condensed stuck in my brain. <laughs> but there's not condensation that it evaporate, thank you. So if you're using a recipe, use less liquid, very similar to your crock pot. Damn. Um, the length of cooking time depends on the density of your food. So the denser the food, the um, quicker it actually cooks because it retains the heat better. That's kind of backwards from oh, yeah. what you think. Mm -hmm. If it's not dense, like a soup would cool off much faster than a stew. So if that makes better sense. Yeah. I have a meat thermometer that goes in and it has a little metal The thing. cable? Yeah, could you like just put that in, close it all off, and then watch it's the gonna temperature? It's going to give a little gap in your lid. So Would you it? might have minimal, I know, cables it, the cable's see, really see. narrow. Yeah. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay. But yes, you could do that. Um, you can't burn food in it. You can't dry it out. Mm -hmm. Well, I got these new gizmos that work you, to your phone. Yeah, the Bluetooth. You can, you can put monitors. it in, and, and I, I'm assuming that you can get enough transmission through everything. You can, mm -hmm. because the the, there's a YouTube channel that I like a lot, Rose Red. She teaches at Dixie. She lives out in Apple Valley, and she actually has a thermometer because she was testing all the new electric pressure canners, and she wanted to make sure they came up to the kill zone temperature for long enough. And she put the thermometer in the jar with the food. It was Bluetooth and generated this whole report of the entire time, what the temperatures were, how long it stayed in the kill zone and came down so that she could do a really good evaluation of those electric pressure canners. So it's kind of a similar concept. Okay. I think those are the key things I wanted to tell you. Make sure your lid fits tightly. And again, can I say it enough? Last year, a person in the class was teasing me, no air gaps, none because that'll just make your food cool down way too fast. Question? Yes. Do you have a brand you recommend? This is my homemade one. The pattern will be on the website for these classes and it's really easy. So, um, and or you can buy the Wonder Baths and that's the only thing I didn't check prices on today. Mm, there's a Wonder Pot too. It's just a big, super insulated. Right. You know what? I think I lied. Um, so the prices that I saw on Amazon ranged from 46 to $100 today for a thermal cooker that retains heat like this. And so there were some bags, there were the metal um, cylinders. This, you just have to pay for the um, polystyrene beads that are like a, a bean bag. And there's enough in the bag that you get at Walmart to make two Wonder Boxes. So go in with a friend. They used to be about $20 a bag. And so, <laughs> it's not too much more. My wife made one and it, it wasn't horribly. Expensive. And this can be out of scraps. Do you put that in a, a cooler? I don't. You don't. But you I could. Don't. You could. There, there's a cardboard box somewhere on the floor. Anything. And that's what I store it okay. in. And if I wanted to, I could leave it in there while I put the food in and it would be fine. So I love this. I use it throughout the summer because not only are these all great emergency preparedness tools, but I don't want to heat my house up cooking. So, um, and that's, you guys, use the stuff now. You don't want to be in a stressful emergency situation trying to learn to use your equipment, yes. So all these things, you can see they're dirty and beat up because they get used all the time. Any more questions about Wonder Box, Wonder Bag? Uh-huh. Could you cook bread? So, the lady who's the guru, what she did is she took this pot of water, uh, this pot, put boiling water in the bottom, put bread dough or like muffin batter in um, 
canning jars, she had a taller pot. Put the lid on, water boiling, and then put it in. Now, the consistency was kind of like a steamed bread. I don't know if you've had like steamed brown bread or um, a steamed pudding. If you're, if you're British and know what a steamed pudding is, <laughs> plum pudding is a steamed pudding. Um, so it had a kind of different consistency. I like the browning on muffins and bread. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with a steamed Christmas pudding, but I didn't like that and I would never do that. I would use the sun oven to bake it. Any more questions? Okay. So then this is a brand name sun oven. So it's a solar cooker. I'm gonna try and not hide behind it. Um, it's a little more expensive. I was somewhat disgusted to find that the price has gone up $100 from last summer. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're capitalizing on it. So last summer when we taught the class, you couldn't get them. Everything was back ordered and it was $349. This year it's $449, but it's in stock. Um, same concept, you're having the reflection. It's focusing into the cooking chamber. I don't know, can you guys see if I do that? Um, what I like about this one is you can bake in it. Mm -hmm. So in the summer, I make bread in it. Last Saturday, I made pulled pork in it. Last Saturday, you remember, the wind was really blowing. <laughs> and I'm always concerned there's going to be a kite effect. Um, but on the leg back here, there are two stakes that can go in, and I have never had it blow over, even in 30 mile an hour gusts. Mm -hmm. I still get nervous, but it's never blown under. So what this does is you need to follow the angle of the sun. You can use this leg to adjust the tipping point and then trying to make sure you guys can see. At the bottom of the glass door on this side there's a little white um, gauge and on the other side there's a little white gauge. You might have to come up and look. And all you do is you position it so that the sun is shining through those gauges and highlighting a little hole in the bottom and then you know exactly how to turn it. When I'm cooking in this, I turn it about every hour. You could be crazy and go out and turn it every half hour, but I really don't see a need to do that. If you don't have those gauges, if you have an older oven. You have the global? Do you have the, so let's, let's talk a little history. We're gonna get there in just a second. Um, so that's all you're trying to do is follow that sun by turning and by tipping it to get the ultimate sun. So when I was making that pulled pork last week, I actually forgot it out there. It was 6.30, I'm like, oh, it's probably cooled off. I haven't been turning it. It's later, the sun is lower. And sometimes I find when the early morning, late evening, when the sun is lower, it doesn't get quite as hot. I went out, it was still 300 degrees. Mm -hmm. So um, I have found, I, can't, I never get it above 350. But even if it's only 300, I can bake anything I want to bake. I can if make anything. If it's too hot, do you just point it not away? Or it what? doesn't ever get it too doesn't. hot. Okay. You cannot burn, you cannot okay. overcook. And you need black. You need, you need darker black. pans. Yeah. It actually comes with a set of two okay. pans with lids, and you can even stack those pans on top of each other. So okay. I've cooked meat in the bottom pan and potatoes on the top pan before. Um, but the manufacturer says you cannot burn. I had a burning experience. I was roasting radishes because they are so good and sweet. And I forgot about it again. And I turned them into charcoal briquettes. <laughs> but that's the only time I've ever seen it burn. Well, then you can use them in your volcano stove. <laughs> um, yeah, I could. Grandma, you should tell me, eat those cookies anyway. Charcoal is good for you. <laughs> so... I love this. The limitation is you have to have sun. And I've always said, as soon as there's a natural disaster, we're not going to have sun. <laughs> so that's always been my complaint. That doesn't mean I don't use it. It means I just have redundancy in other areas. Now, you mentioned you had an older model. So Sun Oven is the company that makes these solar ovens. And they're, this is the all-American model. The prior model was the global. If you see a global, I would say get it. The baking chamber is 20% smaller. I guess they were getting harassed. It just can't fit enough stuff in there. You need a bigger baking chamber. But they sacrificed insulation. So that's why this one only gets to 350. The global 
will go up to 400 because it's got all that extra insulation. So someone was at my house today and I was explaining that and he's like, well, couldn't you put styrofoam, you know, take some styrofoam sheeting and put it around the bottom and you probably could if you wanted to improve insulation. So it just would make it a little bulkier. This How weighs long ago do you think town. they switched from global to this model? It's probably been eight or nine years. Okay. It's been a long time. You'd have to find a used one somewhere. I don't well, think you would I find a new one. I have one I just have never used. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the global. It doesn't have those positioning indicators. So what you do <laughs> is you stand behind it and you make sure the shadow is even on all sides. Okay. So oh, if it's smart. the same on either side, same front to back, then you're lined up okay. I really like the indicators because it's so easy to line up, get everything correct, the angle, the direction. That's, that's what I like about this one. It's $62. It is an oven. It gets hot. You do not want children touching that glass. It is like you are touching an oven door. You will need hot pads to open it and get your food out. Um, <coughs> so you can bake, boil, um, Everything except fry in this. So even if you wanted to cook a pan, heat a pan of soup, you could put it in there and it would do it. Um, you can make hard boiled eggs. You just stick the eggs in there. Let me show you one more feature. Because um, you're wondering, oh, you're tipping that all the time. What's happening to your food in the bottom? Is it sliding all over? So there is a rack in the bottom and it hangs on two pins. And so it always stays level. No matter what you're doing to the sun oven, it always stays. Now, if you have the sun oven tilted side to side, then it will turn. But for front to back, when you're adjusting this angle, it's always level. They also make a dehydrating accessory. Don't bother with that. I don't think it's worth it. It's $50. I wouldn't get it. But that's, that's me. Any questions on the solar oven? Their website, thesunoven.com, he has lots of videos on how to cook with it. And I have a handout that'll be on the website. It'll have all the links to the websites of what I'm talking about, how to make um, your own wonder box, all those things. How do you know how long to put something in there? Well, this is the Sun Oven website says it takes about the same time as a conventional oven. Let's so talk you have to know how to cook to use this <laughs> Just put your canned soup in there. You don't even have to take it out of the can. Just take the lid off and put your canned soup in there. It's just like heating anything. Um, you don't need, but you don't need a burner. You just put it in there and it, it's like convection heat. It's actually convection. How do you know when it's done? It takes about the same time as a regular oven. Remembering if you're only getting the 300 degrees for whatever reason, it's going to take a little longer. The other thing that adds a little bit of time is I preheat it, make sure it's up to 300 or 350, put my food in and the temperature drops. It's because all of a sudden now you're putting something cool in there and it'll drop anywhere from 50 to 100 degrees if I'm taking something chilled out of the refrigerator. The other thing that happens and especially if you're baking is this glass fogs all up and it's hard to see the thermometer. So you can see the spindle, but you can't necessarily see the degrees on the thermometer. So I always look before I put stuff in, okay, where's about 300, where's about 350? And one of these days I'm gonna take a marker, you know, sharpen it. Because <laughs> then I know I can see it, but I just haven't done it. So you might start timing after you put it in, wait till it reaches the appropriate temperature and then start timing. And the only things I time are baked goods if I'm baking okay. or if I'm hard boiling an egg, okay. then I'll time that. But with a soup, it doesn't matter. No, okay. it's just like you've got it on your right. stove top. Okay. You can heat it till it's, till it's hot and it could stay in there for five hours and you would be fine because it's not going to burn. Any other questions? Yes. What's the website? Oh, it's sunoven.com. Is that where your other things are going no, to be? No. That's the no, one I want. That's DV Utah. You, Come and look at, at it here because it's long enough I don't want to uh, try and... Yeah. Okay. And truly, I'm going to tell you, if I could get one thing, it's this. So we'll talk, we're going to talk okay. about this okay. next. I do find their website interesting. 
where a lot of emergency preparedness stuff comes from is third world countries where they had no power. And so in Africa, they have sun oven bakeries where the sun ovens are on a trailer and they bake in them and sell the bread. So we just, sun, uh, in Africa. Oh cool, and sun I oven, there. <laughs> sun <laughs> oven, which is this company, um, manufactures those and provides them to various oh, villages so that they can have a source of income and food. Cool. Okay. We're good on Sun Heaven? Okay, so I have one. I tried it one time so far. And, and you made a quick bread. I did, so it didn't work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because she felt it wasn't done. It was still moist. And quick breads will be moister. And I'm going to say I live, leave quick breads in maybe twice as long. And they're still going to be moister. They're not going to be like they came out of an oven that has a drier heat. This is a kind of a moist heat. Quick bread, meaning like banana bread? Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, like that. zucchini okay. or banana. Can okay. Okay. But I think they say to use less liquid, which I didn't know until I oh. did like, but mm -hmm. yeah. So you do have to adjust things a little bit, but they have a lot of recipes on their website. They do. And again, so what, what about regular bread? Oh, I probably cook that maybe a half hour longer from when I put it in to when I take it out, a half hour longer than a conventional recipe, solely because the temperature's a little lower and then that drop in the temperature when I open it and put something in. Do you modify the amount of water you put in? I do not. So, just everything else is the same. So does it brown okay? Like your bread? The top? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the top does get brown. Okay. Now, Okay, so when I was making three weeks ago, meat on the bottom, potatoes on the top, making the infamous funeral potatoes, because that was what was requested, you know, and it's got those crumbs on the top. So they got brown, but they didn't get really crunchy. You, you can't get a crunch. Okay. Um, so if you want crunch, that's not your... Okay. Use your Dutch That's what oven. your weed burner's for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can take your, your, your potatoes out and just like the broiler, instead of the broiler, use the weed burner and get that crunch on the top. Kids <laughs> 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 love it. You spray it with water yeah. 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 to get it brown. Just no, says, because okay. baking is going to generate that moisture and it's still, you get condensation oh, on okay. the top. Yeah. So, um, and if you're a bread baker, you know that... Um, if you spray the top of your bread with water or if you throw some water on the bottom of the oven when you put it in, it creates steam and you get a different texture of crust. Mm -hmm. Anybody looking at me like they know what that is? <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so do you want, you don't want, if you don't want it so crunchy, you put some water in the oven? Or, no, no don't use saying? any water. I'm talking I about have, yeah, right? a conventional oven when you're wanting that specific texture of a crunchy bread. Uh -huh. That's what you do. This already generates moisture in there, so you don't need to add water at all. So if you add water, it makes it crunchier? Sure. In a conventional oven, which is a dry heat. So we're getting I'm a little bit really off track. Confused. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. put the sun oven aside. Right. You want a crisp crust on your right. bread. You're trying right. to get that French baguette. You either can spray the top with water, put it in your conventional oven, or you can take a cup of water, throw it on the bottom of the oven as you put your bread and in, and it creates crunchy. steam. Oh, really? yeah. So steam ovens, hmm, five, ten years ago, were very trendy. Huh. I haven't heard so much about them, but it was to get those interesting textures. Okay, now, back on topic. <laughs> Any questions? Alrighty, this is the volcano stove. If I could do one thing only, this is what I would get. This is the reason. It runs on charcoal, wood, or propane. Um, this is the propane attachment. It connects to my 20 gallon propane canister. This was designed by engineers. It is extremely efficient, extremely. Um, using this with a Dutch oven uses at least a third less charcoal than if you were using a campfire or some other means with a Dutch oven to heat it. It's only five inches tall. Oops. So there's your volcano. It's deep inside. 
If you're going to use the propane attachment, it sits on the very bottom and it comes out through one of these holes. There are vents so you can control your heat. It is super, you, it'll take 250 pounds. Now, because it's engineer designed, the heat comes up. I have cooked on plastic tables with it and it doesn't melt them. So the heat is all coming up, which means it's all going on your food. Um, it comes with a grill, so you could barbecue with it. Never do that. If I want to heat a pan, then I'll do that. I'll put it on top here. Um, Why not grill? So don't cook yeah. on the grill? You can. I just don't. Oh. I use my barbecue. So you could you could cook the stuff you're going to put in that bag, heat yes, it all up, you could. and then put it in. It's more efficient if you're only heating one thing to go in the bag to use the rocket stove. Ro rocket, but okay. If you're making two meals, I would do this. I would bring whatever I'm putting in here to a boil, put it in, save it for tomorrow, and then put today's meal here. Um, it has a, this holds your wood or charcoal, goes in the bottom. And this goes on top of your propane burner. You can see it gets pretty darn hot. Um, and if you want your charcoal to be super efficient, you can put that on top of this instead. And you don't cover it. Okay. Now, can I have your, your um, Dutch oven, Kevin? Yeah. So this is 13 inches wide. A 10 or a 12 inch Dutch oven will fit down inside. Is yours a 14? 12. The 12? So that would fit down inside just like that. Now, this will work in the rain. It'll work in the wind. It'll work in anything. That's why it's my number one choice. There's no limitation. I guess if it was flooding, it wouldn't work. But, you know, it doesn't have the limitations of needing weather to cooperate. Um, just another example of how efficient it is. I was at a trade show, and this um, volcano stove booth, a lady was canning all day. She had a little propane canister. She canned the entire day on her volcano stove, and there was still propane in that canister at the end of the day. What was she using for a pot? Um, she was using a, a, a regular boiling water bath. She was okay. canning quartz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quartz. It's really efficient. And on that on teeny top. little. So she put that on top and set that can around here. I can on mine all summer because I don't want to heat up my house. So this is what I can on using the propane. Uh-huh. I have a question. I bought one <clears throat> twenty five, thirty years ago. It's been a long time. Never used it. Mm -hmm. I remember reading something when newer ones came out that mine didn't have. Would it be that propane? So um, now, I've got to get it out now. <laughs> so it used to be the the volcano two came like this without the propane attachment. Now, and you could buy the propane attachment separately. Now they have the volcano two and the three. The three just means you get the propane attachment. And they've thrown in some wrenches so that you can attach to your propane cylinder. So you can Maybe. buy it separate? I didn't look on their website for that. You could last year. So Because I looked last year and you could buy the propane attachment mm -hmm. still. So, probably. The other thing that they have, and this is the one thing I didn't get here today with, is what's called a lid. It's made out of Kevlar. It looks a lot like what Kevin has over there on the floor <laughs> that he was using as a homemade sun oven with the um, sun shield on the car. And it fits over the top. Now you've got a convection oven and the air is rotating and you can use even less fuel. So let's talk about what I have in my emergency preparedness to run this. I have three 40 gallon trash cans of charcoal. Charcoal has no shelf life, unless you get the charcoal that's treated with the lighter fluid, that will evaporate over time and you're up a creek if that's what you're counting on. So um, one charcoal briquette generates approximately 27 degrees of heat. 
A pound of charcoal has 14 briquettes in it. So I have 80 pounds of charcoal in each of those um, trash cans. So I've got 240 pounds of charcoal. I'm in business for quite some time if that's my sole heat source. The time to buy charcoal, Memorial Day, Father's Day, Labor Day. It goes on sale and they have the two big bags shrink wrapped together. And that's the best price you generally see every year. Um, again, you're gonna use a lot less fuel with this. So it takes some adjusting because people wanna put in as much charcoal as when they barbecue. It's gonna get really hot and you're wasting charcoal. How many do you put, how much do you put in then? How many briquettes? So what am I doing? Ask me what, how am I cooking to like, determine? To do a bread. To do a bread, so I'm gonna do a bread in my Dutch oven? I guess, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put probably six on the bottom and maybe 10 on the top at most. If I'm using the lid, I will reduce that by at least a third because that, that lid is gonna keep the heat from escaping even more. But then a soup would be a lot more. So I would only heat a soup on here and put if I'm making something else too. I wouldn't waste all that charcoal. Okay. I would use the rocket stove. And I'm going to have on the website instructions for how to build a rocket stove using brick. If you wanted a more permanent one. It's not portable like that, but it's all the same concept. Um, this, I am thrilled to say, has had no price increase from last year. So, isn't it? Oh, and this is how it collapses. You just take it from the bottom and it folds up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really easy. And you can see mine is, again, well used. Everything I have, I want to make sure I know what I'm doing when the emergency happens. So, how much is it? It is, the one without the propane attachment is 149 with the propane is 189 And it's in stock. Again, last year, neither of these things were in stock. So, let me see. If there's anything else I wanted to tell you. That's on your website? Yeah. It's on, it's, we're going to put it on the, he's going to tell you the website. slash prep. I'll show it to you if you want to just look at it, take a camera picture. Or it's on Diamond Valley Friends down in the comments every time. I post it every time we have a class. So there'll be the links to Sun Oven, the links to Volcano Stove, instructions on how to make the homemade beanbag style um, wonder box. Now Fred made a wonder box after the class last year. Tell us how that worked for you. Well, interestingly, it got used almost every day because I do overnight whole grain for breakfast. And so... Uh, Man, I'm sorry. Bring, bring <laughs> that, well, I rotate. That's another story, but bring it to boil I let it boil for 10 to 15 minutes, just simmer enough to get everything completely hot, drop it in the Wonder Box, put the cover on. Next morning, it is completely done. And, and still hot. And ready to eat. So. so, any other questions about anything? Wonder Box, volcano stove, um, sun oven. But again, if I could only do one thing, it would be this. That's me. <laughs> You have to find what works for you and what's easiest for mm. you to use. And we bought one right after class last year and Winona keeps saying, we haven't tried it yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, what site are you quoting those prices from? From um, Volcano Grill. Oh, directly. Mm -hmm. okay. From the manufacturer. Okay. And I looked them up today to confirm that the prices I put down on the first they're a lot more stuff. expensive on Amazon and everywhere. Yeah. Else. No, go, we're going to go to the manufacturer. Okay. Yes. Would their website have recipes or tell how much briquettes and stuff to use for certain dishes? I don't know. No, it looks like it well. comes with the, if you it, buy a bundle, it has a recipe book with it. So there's, there's at least a recipe book available. Mm -hmm. But that's where if you're practicing with it in advance, you'll get a feel for that. Just think of those 27 degrees per briquette. Anything else? And do you have your briquettes in 
You said garbage bags? The no, no, trash cans. Oh, the, trash the cans. Metal no. trash cans. I, mine are actually plastic, okay. but they're in a shaded uh, area. You don't have them in a bag. You no, no, because I want something that I could drag. If I were by myself, I could drag it to where I needed it. And that charcoal, one we've emptied because we use it. The other two, they've moved with me three times. So just put it on a hand truck and it goes with us. And then because it uses wood, let's say you had to evacuate. You have a wood option. And because it's so efficient, it doesn't need very much. The efficiency is what makes this really wonderful. The efficiency combined with the multiple fuels. Now where do you put the wood? So when you... We're going to put it in the bottom there. There's a... on. Where's the, did I bury the grate? This grate rests in the bottom, about an, an inch off the bottom, and that's where you put your wood. Uh huh. And then if you're using wood to cook, you can put your grill on top, either use it like a grill, put your pan here. Um, I will, so let me give you an example of when I was learning to use it. I was using the lid and I was making cornbread in a cast iron skillet and I put way too much charcoal in there. <laughs> so the top was perfect, the bottom was black as can be. You just really have to scale back and it's not going to be intuitive. You're going to want to use as much charcoal as you use in your barbecue if you're doing charcoal barbecue. But you don't need that much. You don't need that much. And then you know you can control it. What's, do I have a statistic here with the vents? You know, you can make it burn longer by using the vents to control the heat. <clears throat> okay, this says a small bottle of protein will, uh, protein, propane will last for six to eight hours. And I thought I had made in my notes how long charcoal would last. I think well, they said when you 90 say small minutes. small bottle of propane, what, two pounds? Yeah. The one pound bottle? Little, one pound bottle. Little green ones. What is it, 16 yeah. ounces or something? Yeah. The little green ones. Mm -hmm. Are they one or two pounds? They're one. Okay. So you, yeah, that's how come she could can all day. Yeah, she can the entire. But they don't last long as far as expiration. You've got to use them within a certain period or else they. They don't? No, they should no, last they forever. They yeah, no, they don't. Don't they? Mm -hmm. you, have no, put a, you have to put a threaded <laughs> cap on them, uh, a okay. brass threaded cap, and then they won't. Okay, mine didn't. So get a brass threaded cap. For a one pound, a little one. I don't know what the size. This yeah. is size to fit your 20, 20 pound. And it's really easy to attach. Um, and then you control the flame. And again, people want to go crazy. You rack that flame up. You control it with this, depending upon how much propane it feeds through the line. And it doesn't take very much. But see, this is my learning curve. You can see where this got flaming hot. It's even a little bent because I was learning and I tried, I kept making things too hot. I wasn't used to how little fuel it needed. So back to your point, use it now so that we know how to use it when we need yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, use everything now. Because if you're, let's say there's a natural disaster and you're living off your food storage, you don't want to waste your food storage. You want it to be efficient and used. So yeah, if you're gonna burn it, burn it now. Don't burn it down the road when that's all you have to eat. When you still can replace it. Yeah, when you still can replace it. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much.